mga freelancer, um, it's time to file and pay our taxes ngayong end na ng second quarter ng 2019. For this video tutorial, ang ituturo ko is how to file and pay your quarterly income tax for the second quarter. But this is only for those na nag-avail na ng 8% income tax. But before we proceed, uh, namili ako ng comments doon sa mga nag-post last video tutorial ko about, about the first quarter filing ng income tax din. And somehow related naman to doon sa pag-file natin ngayon. So, let's discuss this first. So, um, this, is, this question is from JP David. Ang sabi niya, yung 250k na deduction po, ginagamit na po ba yung buong amount? Paano na po pagdating sa second quarter? So, ang sagot dito is yes, nilalagay siya for the first quarter. Actually, sa lahat, during the first, second, third, and annual, nilalagay siya. Kasi, um, ang ginagawa kasi natin sa pag-file natin, um, parang nag -ano lang siya, nag accumulate lang siya. So, so, sa first quarter, ang sakap niya is January to March. Pagdating ng second quarter, hindi lang naman yung earnings natin from... April to June eh. Um, idadagdag din yung kinita natin ng first quarter. So, mamaya mas maiintindihan mo siya as we go through the tutorial. Now, let's also discuss yung question ni Rico Laurencio. Ang question niya is, after po mag-fill up at successful na po lahat, ano ang next step? If zero naman po ang lumabas at walang babayaran, pupunta pa rin ba sa bangko? Okay, so yung susunod na step, pagtas ka nang mag-file, di ba nakaka-receive tayo ng confirmation email? At naka-indicate naman doon na kapag ka, if return with payment, ibig sabihin pupunta ka sa banko at if ipiprint mo yung email confirmation together with the form na pinilapan mo. Now, paano daw pag zero yung babayaran? Siyempre, hindi ka na pupunta sa banko kasi wala ka namang babayaran. Um... Pupunta ka lang sa bangko pag merong, merong hang juice or tax juice. Now, for me, kasi di ba most, most of the time, wala rin naman akong binabayaran. Um, usually, during annual na lang eh. Ang ginagawa ko is, I print out hard copy noong email confirmation, pati noong form na finilapan ko. Tapos, kinocompile ko siya sa isang folder for future reference or for future use. And kung lagi kang nanonood ng mga video tutorial ko about DIR, naging malaking tulong yung pag-print out ko kasi there was a moment na kinailangan ko yung kopya na yon And also, in case kasi na makorap yung eBIR application na naka-install sa ating mga laptop, chances are lahat ng nakasave na form doon na, na finilapan mo, mabubura siya, mawawala siya, hindi mo na siya ma... ma pardon, marerecover. So... Kung hindi mo rin lang naman kayang i-print out, mas maganda kong mag-save ka sa yung Dropbox or um, Google Drive, whatever. Um, pwede mo rin i-save sa hard drive mo. So, it's your choice. Um, para rin naman yan sa future use eh. So, magagamit mo rin yan later on. So, now that we're done with that, with that let's now proceed with the video tutorial. And as I always remind you guys, before you even start filing your taxes, make sure to update your EBIR forms. Paano? Simply scroll down to sa video description kasi andito yung link dun sa video guide on how to update it. Click mo lang to and you will be redirected doon sa mismong video tutorial on how to update the EBIR forms na naka-install na sa inyong mga computer. Actually, same process lang din for those na first time pa lang mag install nito. Um, you can watch the entire video if you want. And you can also scroll down to the video description kasi andito yung link sa BIR website kung saan mo siya pwedeng i-download. So, una, i-check mo muna ano na nga ba yung latest version. Um, ang naka-indicate dito, ang latest version is 7.4.2. So, next is to check kung updated nga ba or hindi yung naka-install sa iyong mga computer. So, Open your EBIR forms. So, dito mo sa taas makikita kung anong version ng EBIR forms yung naka-install sa iyong computer. And since same lang din naman siya, which is version 7.4.2,
that means na hindi ko na kailang i-update yung sa akin kasi I have the latest version. Pero yung, kung, kung yung sa'yo, iba yung nakalagay, just follow the instruction and the video tutorial before filing your tax. Again, the links are available on the video description, so check that out. So let's start filing. For tutorial purposes, ang gagamitin ko po is a non-existing TIN. For first-timers, simply fill up the profile. And para naman sa mga dati na gumagamit nito, simply key in your TIN. Tapos mag-auto-populate na yung ibang information once you hit tab on your keyboard. Under list of BIR forms, to file the income tax for the second quarter, hanapin mo yung BIR form 1701QV2018. Dahil sa mga bagong forms, um, mapapansin mo na simplify na siya, hindi na siya mahabang forms, pinaikli na. And then para na siyang calculator na nag-auto-compute, so less hassle sa mga taxpayers na tulad natin. And also, dito mo rin makikita yung mga um, previous tax filing mo or yung mga returns mo. So, nasa-save siya dito sa mismong EBIR forms. So, to start filing, click fill up and then click OK. On bullet number 1, since tama naman yung taon, 2019, no need to change, uh, go to bullet number 2 and choose second quarter. Bullet number 3, amended return. Of course, no, kasi first time pa lang nating nag-file. Under part 1 naman, background information on taxpayer. No need to fill in your tax and RDO code kasi automatic na siya dyang nag-auto-populate. Just go to number 7, which is taxpayer type. I'm gonna choose single proprietor. Tapos, under ATC naman, or number 8, I'm gonna choose business income, 8% IT rate. For number 7 and 8, magkakaiba po yan kada taxpayer. Bakit single proprietor and, and business income yung pinili ko? Kasi po, nagparegister po ako sa DTI ng business name. And yun din po yung inilagay ko sa BIR form nang nagparegistro po ako as a freelancer. So, ang nangyari po, naging parang na-classify ako as a single proprietor kasi parang ako lang yung empleyada ng business na yun. Tapos po yung income ko naman po is na-classify siya as business income. Uh, bakit naman po 8% IT rate? Kasi po nagpalit na ako ng income tax rate noong, I mean, ngayong taon. Kasi last year po, graduated income tax rate po talaga ang ginagamit ko. But then I realized na, well, makakatipid pala ako sa 8% income tax rate. Um... Ito po kasing implementation na to was made under train law Ta para mas malaki po yung take-home pay ng mga taxpayer. Kaya po in ko siya. Pero if you wanna know more kung paano ko siya in you may refer to the video description below para po sa video links ng aking BIR experience nung nagpa-update po ako ng Certificate of Registration. You may skip number 9, 10, and 12 dahil nag-auto-populate naman po yung info na inligay natin kanina sa profile. So, just go to number 11 and key in your date of birth. Number 13, citizenship. Number 14, foreign tax number, leave it blank. Number 15, claiming tax. Uh, claiming foreign tax credits, no. Tapos yung 16A is for those na naka-graduated income tax pa rin. So, since I'm filing for 8% tax rate as indicated on number 16, so I'm gonna skip 16A. Dito naman po sa part 2, background info on spouse, if applicable lang naman po. Ito po kasi yung para sa mga married couples na gusto sabay na nagpa-file na kanilang mga tax returns. For part 3 naman, total tax payable numbers 26 to 31, Hindi po siya na edit kasi automatic pong nagkakaroon ng amount yan kapag na-fill up na po natin yung page 2. On part 4 naman, uh, details of payment, that's for bank or authorized collecting agent. Uh, sila po yung mag-fill up niyan. Yan ay kung meron ka lang namang kailangan bayaran sa banko. Kapag may amount na lumabas dito sa part 3. So, skip mo na yan, tapos proceed na tayo sa page 2. Tapos sa page 2, schedule 1, scroll up mo lang, number 36 to 46, ito po yung para sa mga nag-graduated income tax. And since 8% po ang aking ipinafile at yun yung pinili ko sa page 1, naka-grade out siya. Which means, hindi ka na, hindi mo na siya kailangang fill upan at wala na rin rason para magkamali, magkamali ka pa sa pagpa-file. Um, ang kailangang fill upan ng mga naka-8% IT rate, 
is Schedule 2 to 4, numbers 47 to 68. And as I mentioned earlier, since nag auto compute na po yung mismo form, konting boxes na lang po yung kailangan nating lagyan ng figures. Pero you can still use your calculator to double check it if you want. So punta tayo sa number 47 which is sales or revenues or receipts. So kunin mo yung cash receipts book na meron ka, plus i-add mo at kunin yung total na kinita mo mula April 1 hanggang June 30. Yun yung amount na ilalagay mo dito. So for example, sa akin kasi 80,508, hit enter. Tapos makikita mo may mag appear na 2 decimal places. Edit ko lang gawin kong 45 kasi may 45 cents sa aking total sales. Hindi rin kasi nare-recognize nung form yung period sign. So kung sakasakaling may cents din yung sayo, ganito yung tamang paglalagay. Tapos sa number 48, non-operating income, I'm gonna leave it blank. Number 49, total income for the quarter. So nakita nyo naman, automatic nyo nang nakuha yung sum or total ng 47 and 48. Sa number 50 naman, total taxable income or loss, previous quarter, item number 51 of previous quarter. So this time, you have to check your previous tax filing. So since we're filing for second quarter, ang i-check mo is yung first quarter. Um, kung may printout ka, mas madali mong makikita. Pero kung wala naman, you can actually view your previous filing dito din sa EBIR forms. O kung nai-save mo naman siya sa hard drive, i-open mo lang yung document to look for the needed information. Hanapin mo yung number 51 sa previous filing, um, tapos sa akin kasi nakalagay 62,000 pesos. So, tapos, mapapansin mo sa number 51 dito sa mismo form na pinipilafan natin, automatic niya nang na-compute yung sum ng 49 and 50. Tapos, sa uh, bullet number 52 naman, allowable reduction. So, dito napapasok yung ating tax exemption na 250,000. Again, guys, lagi siyang ilalagay every filing. Ito yung na-mention ko kanina sa Q&A. Kaya siya nilalagay every filing is because para lang tayong nag update ng ating kita. Di ba nga dinagdag natin yung kita natin from previous quarter sa kita natin ngayong second quarter. So, in other words, this is our revenue to date or as of June 30, 2019. Tapos, saka natin ibabawas yung uh, tax exemption. So, sa number 53, mapapansin nyo, negative yung value. So, pagdating sa number 54, zero ang ating tax due. For schedule number 3, items 55 to 63, I'm gonna skip it kasi for me, not applicable naman lahat yan. Pero let's say ikaw may binayaran kang buwis nung first quarter, you need to fill up number 56 which is tax payments for the previous quarter. Diyan mo ilalagay yung halaga na binayaran mo noong nakaraang quarter. Tapos, i-discuss ko yung tungkol dyan sa susunod kong video tutorial which is during the third quarter filing for income tax. So, be sure to check that out guys para sa isa na namang dagdag alaman. Pero, again, since last quarter, wala naman akong binayaran. So, I'm gonna skip this um, schedule number 3. Moving on to schedule number 4, item 64 to 67, I'm gonna leave it blank as well dahil wala naman akong penalty, surcharges, or interest na kailangang bayaran. So, sa number 68, total amount payable or overpayment, zero ang value. Kaya naman, parang katulad lang ng first quarter, wala pa rin tayong babayarang buwis ngayong second quarter. So, if we go back to page 1, mapapansin nyo yung part 3, Puro zero pa rin yan dahil nga nakabasa sa page 2 yung mga amount na dapat mag appear dito. So, it turns out nga na wala pa rin akong babayarang buwis this quarter. Kaya zero lahat yan. So, since we have everything filled out, it's time to validate the form. We do this to simply check if we missed anything. So, this prompt is an indication that the form is ready for submission. So, just click OK. Tapos, let's go ahead and submit the form. Just click here, tapos may pop-up message na lalabas. Para ma-submit yung final copy, make sure na stable lang yung internet connection at valid yung email address na inilagay mo sa form. Click OK to submit. Tapos, click OK lang ulit. Tapos, wait for the prompt of whether you need to resubmit or not. So, 
So, okay naman yung submission. Successful naman. You just need to wait for the email confirmation. So, just click OK. At para sa mga may kailangang bayaran, you may click this link for the payment instruction. Otherwise, click Close. Let me show you the screenshot para dun sa email confirmation. So, this means na successful yung submission mo ng form. At sa mga may kailangang bayaran, you need to print this email confirmation. Tapos, kailangan mo rin i-print yung form, sa, form na pinilapan mo kanina in two copies. Then, proceed to pay through authorized collecting agents or banks. Kung gusto mo namang magbayad through GCash, just check the video description below and the link for the video guide is available right there. Kasi paying through this option, um, hindi mo na kailangan i-print out yung form, pati yung email confirmation. You can just save both of them sa iyong computer, flash drive, para sa future use na rin. Pero paano nga ba i-print yung form na finilapan natin kanina sa EBIR forms? Um, I'll be sure to post the video tutorial links on the description below, so check that out, guys. And that's all for today, guys. If you have questions, suggestions, you can just post it on the comment section below. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And kung gusto mo naman lagi kang updated sa mga BIR tutorials na i-release ko pa, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell para lagi kang updated. Until next time! You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.